We were asked to describe an idea or design theory of the 21st century. This presentation explores an approach to site design that takes its cues from nature and by doing so exposes the false dichotomy between architecture and landscape. Deriving design inspiration from nature is not new, but with the advancements of our technologies and improved understanding of natural systems and structures is having a profound impact on design. These strategies have largely come about to combat the declination of our natural resources and sustain the growth of our human population. There is a perceived division between landscape and architecture. The division of architecture and landscape can be primarily attributed to the Western world's philosophy of the opposition between humans and nature. Joel Sanders from the Yale School of Architecture describes this as a dualist way of thinking that views nature as a passive, vulnerable entity that must be protected from the predatory interests of humans, including architects. This idea was even propagated by the father of landscape architecture, Frederick Law Olmsted. In the creation of Central Park, Olmsted's philosophy was to expose people to the natural scenery, unspoiled by evidence of human intervention. The space was designed to be a visual oasis separate from the city. This separation of living space from nature can be seen in development archetypes all over the world. Cities are sparsely clad with vegetation and contaminate the environments in which they stand. Armageddon. Americans spend 4.2 billion hours no each year sitting in traffic on miles and miles of highways that pave their way through the landscape, ending in dead-end cul-de-sacs. Communities seemingly have little concern for compatibility of nature and humans and appear to be more interested in accommodating vehicles. How can we begin to bridge this gap between landscape and architecture and shift our society away from ecological, social, economic, and aesthetic decay. Many designers are turning to the discipline of biomimicry. So what is biomimicry? It's the process of looking at something like a leaf and trying to figure out how to make a better solar cell. It's become popular in the design disciplines, mainly, I think, because people are looking for more sustainable ways to do things. And organisms know how to do this. After 3.8 billion years, life has learned what works and what's appropriate on the planet. And right now, that's what the people trying to redesign our world are looking for. The most important thing that people should know is that a sustainable world already exists. We're just now beginning to open our eyes and realize that the answers to the questions we've been asking, how do we live here sustainably, are all around us. Biomimicry is being embraced by many contemporary designers and researchers people who have committed themselves to the creation of design space for the benefit of mankind, who as part of this commitment see the inextricable link between the environment's success and our own, and through their work express symbiotic possibilities. The Guangyou Power Center by MVRDV. The site is surrounded by a beautiful lake and forested hills. The design aims to create a landscape on top of the new program that enlarges the green qualities and that links the surrounding parks by turning the site into a park. The shifting of the floors causes, as a counter-effect, hollow cores that form large atriums. They serve as lobbies for the housing and offices, plazas for the shopping center, and halls for the museum and leisure functions. In each tower, a number of voids connect to the atrium, providing for light and ventilation and creating semi-public spaces. On the lower floors, the atriums are connected through a series of public spaces on various levels, linking the towers and serving the outdoor facilities of the culture, retail and leisure program. Plantations around the terraces with a floor-to-floor -floor circulation system store water and irrigate the plants. The roofs of these hills and the terraces are planted with box hedges creating a strong, recognizable, cohesive park. This vertical park will improve the climate and ventilation and reduce the energy and water usage. As a result, a series of overgrown hills appear in the landscape. The power center creates a dense urban program with a green regard. Lace Hill by Forest Fulton Architecture. Instead of a towering iconic image disconnected from historic Yerevan, horizontal lace hill stitches the adjacent city and landscape together to support an holistic, ultra-green lifestyle, somewhere between rural hillside living and dense cultured urbanity. The 85,000 square meter proposal is a new model of development for Armenia of a high value spatial fabric dense with overlapping natural and urban phenomena. To create a new firmly rooted architecture urbanism landscape, the project morphs the common urban element, the superblock, to the site, a truncated hill along the natural amphitheater of Yerevan. Native plants irrigated with recycled gray water cover the hill. 
Intricate perforations recalling traditional Armenian lace needlework provide terraced exterior space, natural ventilation, and amazing views for the promenade, hotel rooms, residences, and office space. The Dongdeman Design Park and Plaza by Zach Hadid and Gross Max. The goal of the Design Park and Plaza project was to establish a cultural hub at the center of one of the busiest and most historic districts of Seoul, Korea. The project is comprised of an 85,000 square meter plaza containing a design museum, library, and education of facilities, and a 30,000 square meter park. The design integrates the park and plaza seamlessly as one landscape element, blurring the boundary between architecture and nature. Its continuous landscape promotes fluid thinking across all design disciplines. The Island City Central Park Grin Grin by Edo and Associates. The City Central Park is a large artificial island of shipping ports, private industry and education facilities and residences, all meant to serve as a hub of global commerce for FUCA. The complex geometries were realized via a design method that utilizes bending stress values to create unique curvatures that minimize structural deformation. The roofs are carpeted with grass so that they appear to be continuous with the park's lawn. Concrete pedestrian walkways snake above and below the roof structure contributing to the illusion. Food City by GCLA GCLA has described their proposal for Food City as the marriage of landscape and urbanism. Their project integrates a variety of proposals to decrease overall energy use, concentrated solar collectors, towers covered in thin photovoltaic cells, piezoelectric pads in pedestrian areas, and methane harvesting through sewage percolation tanks. GCLA also proposes water conservation measures critical to off-the-grid survival in water-starved Dubai, like atmospheric water harvesting, solar desalination through concentrated solar collectors, gray water recycling, and application of hydroponic sand to minimize water loss. Essentially, GSLA's vision is an amalgamation of nearly every urban sustainability initiative in the past few years. Edit Tower by T.R. Hamza and Ken Yang. Singapore's 26-story Edit Tower is being created to rehabilitate an urban non-organic site classified as zero culture, where the natural ecosystem has been completely devastated. Besides meeting their clients' practical requirements for a tower for use as retail, exhibition, and auditorium use, the project is very much an ecological design. The unique feature of this scheme is the well-planted facades and vegetated terraces that surround the building. The design approach enables ecological succession to take place and to balance the existent inorganic nature of the site. The vegetation areas are designed to be continuous and to ramp upwards from the ground to the uppermost floor. Importantly, the planting of the tower uses indigenous plants so as not to compete with the existing species of the locality. Biomimicry is the application of nature's designs to solve human problems. At the core of nature's designs are circular systems that are connected to each other and everything in our world. By implementing biomimicry to site design, it is logical then to perceive landscape and architecture as unified systems that both independently and collectively meet the needs of our environment and society. So what does all this mean for the profession of landscape architecture? It means that landscape architecture must continue to improve its understanding of ecological systems and their integration into our constructed spaces. It means landscape architects should be learning new site development tools such as information modeling and integrated project delivery that enable them to maneuver through the growing complexity of site design. It means that as the buildings become part of the spaces between them, landscape architects should prepare their role in site design to expand. It means that landscape architects should explain to clients that the application of such site design strategies is the future. A future in which they can become industry leaders make money, improve communities, and ensure their grandchildren will have a planet and therefore legacy to inherit. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha